we have a strong economy. We don't need me to go through the data. Joe Biden is now messaging. The media is talking about it. Even Fox News as of Friday has acquiesced and said, we have a strong economy. Janet Yellen is saying it. Jay Powell is saying it. Why is it that when, the, when Americans are polled, and it was last month, they're crediting Donald Trump and saying he would be better? Explain this. Well, that's that's level set and contextualized, uh, Stephanie. And thanks for having me on the show uh, for a deeper conversation about this. Look, it, let's 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 look at historically what happens. It, Republicans historically do always uh, uh, the way you ask it. You know who you trust more to deal with the economy, Republican or Democrat, generically, or you know the Republicans have historically had advantage of that. And going from going into 2012. Working on the Obama campaign, when we asked, you know, who would who would do a better job on the economy, Mitt Romney or or Barack Obama, Mitt Romney had a huge advantage uh, around who would handle the economy the, the economy better. Where where uh, where Obama had, and I think where Joe Biden is going to have advantages is when you start di di diving down and sort of who will fight more for working class people, who will fight more for middle class. And that's where we drove the conversation in 2011 around uh, around around the economy. So there is a conversation to be had about the economy. I think the president has had this conversation about the economy, he has to try to try to inoculate uh, as much as possible Republicans' historical advantage on the economy. But then to your point, he has a good story to tell about the economy. But at the same time, just like we saw in the midterm election, if the election is simply about yeah, inflation and or the border, which Republicans want it to be about, Democrats will absolutely get their 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 butts whipped. But what you'll see, hopefully, is that it's about more than just the economy and more than just the borders, right? What you don't see in there is is who's who's who do you trust more to protect, protect democracy? Who do you trust more to protect women's reproductive freedoms? Who do you trust more on health care? Who do you trust more on education? The, the election can't simply be about one or two things, or in fact, Republicans will have an advantage. But Cornell, but what we saw in the midterm. Terms. But what we saw in the midterms is that when you expand that conversation, voters, in fact, have multiple variables that decide how they vote. But why would Democrats get their butts whipped on immigration and the economy? We have a strong economy. And right now, it's Donald Trump who's blocking, who, who's pushing Republicans in the Senate and the House to block an immigration bill. Well, one and and and, I, and my my friend on the other side can speak this too. Like, if you look underneath the data, though, Stephanie, most of the the the, the voters driving the concern about the border, for example, example, are core Republican voters, right? Core Republican. And, and and if you watch Fox, if you listen to re Republicans talk, they're always driving fear and angst and grievance about the border. We're being invaded, right? That is their issue, and they own and they own that issue. They're driving fear about it. We're simply, that's why they don't want to, in fact, pass an immigration bill, because it takes it off, of, it takes it off the political playing field for them, and they don't want to do that. But that's the thing, Mark. They're driving it with misinformation. You and I have talked about immigration a lot over the last couple of years. You've said it's a huge vulnerability for Joe Biden. He hasn't done enough. If you're Joe Biden right now and you have got a bill that Republicans could sign, could, that, that, that could, Republicans could pass and he could sign, and Donald Trump is blocking it and lying about it, what should Biden do? Talk about it every single day from now until November. I mean, I think this is a classic example of where this Trump is making it all about him and not if it's better for the country. He's just doing what's better for him politically. And I think that, that Joe Biden should talk about that a lot. And I think that I think you should, and I think the rest of the news should. I think everybody should, because it's clear that what Donald Trump really wants is chaos on the border. And 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 Joe Biden ran as the anti-chaos candidate, and that's what he's proposed with this bill. It's a solution to the problem. And as one of the guests said earlier uh, on the last show, uh, that if, if Donald Trump had this bill, he'd be running wild with it. Uh, he would be he would be running this up the flagpole, and would be very proud of everything that's in this bill. So, listen, the the thing that's interesting right now is that, you know, James Carville once said it's the economy, stupid, and and I, I think that equation has changed. I think right now it's tribe. It's 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 all about tr tribes, and the tribes just see it through the prism that they want to. But I think that it's going to be undeniable. First of all, economic news is always a lagging indicator with voters. The, economy, the, the improvement always happens before perceptions improve. 
uh, inflation's coming down, but perceptions of inflation haven't haven't met the actual numbers of inflation. But that will that will self correct over time. And listen, if it keeps going the way it is, it's it's one of the most remarkable stories of Biden's presidency. Is not just how good the the, the economy is, but how good is it compared to what everybody thought it was going to be? My God, it was supposed to be a disaster, right? And and it's going to be one of the best economies that a president's ever run. On. And you would have, you, you would think that. I mean, the good news for Joe Biden is he's got he's got nine months to tell the story. So you just said Joe Biden should be talking about this every day of the week. He's giving up an opportunity to talk to millions of people this Sunday, turning down a pre-Super Bowl interview. I understood last year it was Fox. He wasn't going to do an interview on Fox, given that Fox News pumps out misinformation about him every day, tomorrow and yesterday. But not this year. It's CBS. Do you think he's missing a great opportunity to talk to Americans about these very issues? I do. Wow. It's a huge opportunity. I mean, it's a huge, huge. I mean, it's one of the biggest audiences, and, and you know, you'll get in television the whole year. It's more than you'll get at the debates. It's more than you'll get at the convention. And it's not like it's a hostile interview. I mean, Super Bowl interviews are pretty friendly generally, even if it's Fox. So I, I really don't understand it. And the problem is that that drives the perception that Joe Biden is, for whatever reason, avoiding the media. And then the conclusion most people are going to draw with that thinking that he's frail, that he's old, and they're trying to keep him away from, from even friendly press. It's a gift to his critics. I know I have no more time, but Cornell, I don't get to see you often, so I'm asking. If Joe Biden picked up the phone and called you tonight, what would your advice be for him? Well, I'm going to pull a, a card from, from Mark's friends. Tell him it's morning in America, right? You got to start selling the economy, right? The, the economy wasn't great when Ronald Reagan said it was morning in America. But he's but it, but, it, but it was moving in the right direction. You got to sell it. They're not selling the good story about the economy yet, and it's puzzling to a lot of our friends.